Thank you for joining us for this webinar on devices and combination products. My name is Dr. Nika Wayman, Associate Dean for Shady Grove Affairs in the College of Natural Mathematical Sciences at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. This webinar is an introduction to a new class that we're offering in our Master's of Professional Studies in Biotechnology program starting this fall of 2019. This program will be at the universities at Shady Grove on the Rockville campus. So just to share a little bit about our Master of Professional Studies program in biotechnology, the program is designed to not only sharpen your technical skills, but also improve your skills in terms of professional development. Skills like management and leadership, communication, legal and ethical issues, project management, these professional development skills that combine with your technical skills will help to advance your career at your biotechnology company. In order to get your Master of Professional Studies, you are required to take 10 courses, which equates to 30 credits, to complete the degree. This can be done in about 18 months. Uh, the program consists of six core classes and then four electives that you can take within any of the theme thematic electives that we have. This devices and combination products class would be one of those electives that you might take. You can also opt to get a graduate certificate, two of which we have is in biotechnology management and regulatory engineering. In that case, you would take four courses, which would equate to 12 credits, and you could complete that in about one year. As mentioned, our Master of Professional Studies in Biotechnology program is located at UMBC's Universities at Shady Grove campus in Rockville, Maryland. To allow for more convenience, for our many biotechnology professionals along the I-270 corridor. If you'd like more information about our program, please visit our website at shadygrove.umbc.edu slash biotech, where you'll see the full listing of classes, the requirements um, for admission, and other information that could be helpful in you deciding on your next career move. You can also feel free to reach out to me or Rakesha Jones, who can be reached at rcjones at umbc.edu. Now, without further ado, I'd like to turn the webinar over to Dr. Manfred Mater of Novartis Pharma, who is one of the lead instructors for this new course. Welcome, everybody. My name is Manfred Mater, and in the following pages, I will provide some more insight on what to expect in this device and combination products course. Also, it is worthwhile to mention that this is the first course in combination products and medical devices series and some future courses will dive deeper into other aspects um, of this field. Looking at device and combination products, a lot of companies uh, are working on this topic and became very important uh, during the past uh, years or the uh, recent few years. Especially companies like Abbott, Chain, Chain, Novartis, um, for example, are working on these topics, and we were, or we are, very happy to uh, find and identify industry experts and also persons from the regulatory authority uh, to provide uh, sessions in these courses. So, in the past, for um, uh, all the pharmaceutical companies, uh, traditionally tablets, capsules, and other systems or, or products had been uh, of utmost importance. And now um, all that has changed. Combination products are significantly on the rise, um, especially since more and more biologics are being sold worldwide. These biologics need some types of injection systems. And for that reason, um, systems like auto-injectors, uh, pre-filled syringes, pen systems, typically with pre-selection uh, for the insulins, for example, and all these types of products uh, became more and more important during the uh, recent years, which are very different if you compare these with uh, tablets and capsules. And systems like on body pumps, connected systems, uh, which can talk to your smartphone, for example, and also closed loop systems uh, are being used these days. Then that leads us to the question, okay, what is a combination product? And this is described on this slide. In the combination product, we have to consider um, different constituent parts. And one is the active pharmaceutical ingredient, uh, which is the active substance typically. 
um, the drug product, which can be a vial, a cartridge or a syringe, for example. And um, there is a device which is helping to apply uh, these drug products to the patient. And all these, uh, well, these are examples or these components you need uh, to have a combination product. On this example, the primary mode of action is the drug. Of course, there are also uh, examples where the primary mode of action is the device part, but this will be discussed later on. Also, it's very important to note that uh, all of the components, all of these constituent parts are very important to have a complete and to be able to sell a combination product. If one is missing, um, it's cause a problem for the company. Okay, and now the question is, okay, why do more and more drugs need uh, medical devices? Okay, medical innovation is moving really fast. Also empowered patients and consumers, um, they expect more from these applications. It's not enough anymore to use a tablet, for example. Um, there is an expectation um, that you can track uh, what you are doing. Um, you can track your medication. When you take it, maybe you can set up reminders for yourself. And for that reason, uh, combination with the device becomes more and more important and also then you can uh, track it uh, on your smartphone for example and monitor um, how you're taking or using your medication. There are huge advances also in digital technology which are supporting these trends and also the uh, population today is more and more savvy with uh, devices and like uh, smartphones, pads, uh, computers and whatsoever. And for that reason, uh, there's also an expectation uh, we, we move along with that. And also uh, non-traditional healthcare companies like Google, Apple and IBM are entering the healthcare field. Samsung is another example. Samsung is, for example, having the biggest plant worldwide to pro produce biotech products. And uh, so that means also other companies are entering this field. So for that reason also it's uh, quite important for the pharma companies to keep track on that and also develop these systems. Now, if you're looking into some details into the regulation of combination products, since a few years, since 2013, uh, there is a clear definition from the US FDA what encompasses a combination product and there are different types of combination products. For example, a single entity combination product, which can be a pre-filled syringe or an auto injector, is a combination product by US definition. Copac uh, combination product, that means if a, a vial and a syringe is put together into one package and sold as one package, uh, then it's uh, defined as a Copac combination product. And also there are cross-label combination products. An example would be an auto injector or a pen system which is sold separately from uh, the cartridge which it is uh, holding. But the cartridge refers to the auto-injector and the auto-injector refers to the uh, drug product cartridge. And then it would be um, named as a cross-labeled combination product and also would fall under this regulation. And this regulation uh, is extremely important for us because it defines uh, for all these products we have to have a design history file available, available. That means documentation, how do we develop the product, which changes we made to the product. All this needs to be uh, in the hands of the pharmaceutical or medical device company um, to be able to present that upon request. Uh, also important to note is uh, this regulation is quite different in other countries. For example, in Europe, a co-packed and a cross-label combination product does not exist. They are only single entity combination products. Also there the terminology is somewhat different. They call it drug device combinations, but uh, this would be a similar or the same uh, as a single entity combination product uh, according to the US definition. Now, if we look at the global landscape, it's becoming more complicated because only a few countries up to now, it's um, maybe around about 15 right now, have a definition for combination products. Other countries don't. And so that means the regulatory uh, submission pathways are very different in the different countries. Uh, and also the expectation from a GMP's perspective are quite different in these countries. Then also constituents of co-packaged and cross-label combination products may be regulated different in different countries, of course. It might be that a product uh, coming uh, from the same identical line for one country, if it's being shipped into one country, it's 
a combination product. If it's shipped into another country, it's maybe a, a device or cosmetic. So there might be different definitions again in the different countries. And all these regulatory requirements, of course, have to be reflected in the company's procedures, of course, and um, they have to be described in SOPs, in the standard operating procedures, um, how to develop these, how to produce these, um, in order to meet all these regulatory requirements which are existing worldwide. So if we move on to that very busy slide, in, especially for the combination tracks, you see a lot of information up there. On the right hand side, uh, the most important piece for device and combination products is the design controls. Um, there is a huge emphasis on that. And all this information which is being, being executed during design controls is captured in the DHF in the design history file. And this design history file is describing um, all the development efforts. Um, it could be uh, risk management, it could be human factors, it could be data and information from uh, laboratory testing, for example. All that is captured uh, in this design history file and this needs to be available for any in inspections or reviews um, of these uh, products. And uh, also during design controls, there might be some tests which don't work or there are uh, some mishaps or the, the device, for example, is not designed as expected. So that means also during this process, multiple iterations might be necessary uh, to a, a device which is working properly uh, or as expected. And for these also, these iterations also need to be captured in multiple versions, of course, um, in this documentation and all that needs to be traceable, reproducible and be yeah, easy to understand in the ideal case. So after um, development or prior to uh, the launch of the product, typically the FDA would inspect production facilities and also is ensuring compliance uh, to these requirements. Um, this is the occasion where, for example, a design history file is being reviewed or where the uh, assembly and packaging lines are being evaluated uh, if the setup uh, has been done properly. And first of all, the question is, does the product fulfill all the development requirements and uh, the manufacturing operation, is it set up uh, properly? Um, all these questions have to be answered during um, this occasion. For the US or US products, the FDA would perform this inspection. For most other countries, a notified body, which has been assigned by the competent authorities, um, is um, uh, performing these types of inspections. And especially for the combination products, as these products are quite complex, multiple um, divisions from the FDA, they have to work together. In the past, it was quite easy. Uh, for example, the Center of Biologics was regulating and overseeing biologics products. The uh, Center of Drug Evaluation and Research, the CEDAR, was overseeing small molecule products only. And, um, and the Center for Devices and uh, Radiological Health, CDIH, they were seeing um, all device activities. But now uh, we are talking about combination products and for that reason it's extremely important um, that these centers are working closely together and especially the um, Office of Combination Products, the OCP, is also in helping uh, to um, perform that. And this setup is very different in other countries, of course, uh, but also this will be evaluated uh, throughout the course. So that means during the drug development process or combination drug development process, this is a yeah, quite costly process, of course. Um, a large number of compounds are being evaluated in the beginning, and this is narrowed down over years uh, because not all of them um, are meeting the expectations, of course, especially in clinical studies. This has to be evaluated in clinical trials and in, in different phases also. Occasionally, of course, even it might happen that even in phase uh, three, where uh, a lot of testing has been done already, um, that the product cannot be proven uh, effective. And um, for that reason, uh, there is no way to get approval for these drug products. And so that means it's a very long process overall to get a truck to the market. And also one part of that, of course, is the device uh, development. Now the truck delivery part, that means the injection of a biologic, for example, or infusion of a biologic, 
um, also becomes extremely important for clinical trials. Uh, in the past it was a wild syringe approach and now very sophisticated delivery systems are being used uh, and also enable clinical trials of course. And uh, of course part of the drug development is the uh, delivery device and uh, in the past uh, typically wild syringe approach was being used in the clinical trial and then for example a pre-filled syringe and auto injector was used for commercial products but uh, now um, it had uh, became more and more important to use these um, delivery devices already during clinical trial uh, phase three or even earlier which is the typical case and so also some of the devices are even uh, becoming an enabler for these drug products because if you have to um, inject or infuse these drug products to very specific locations the device might be the tool to do that and without that tool it's not possible um, to apply the drug product properly. The most important piece as mentioned before is the combination product and during combination product development is the uh, design controls and uh, first of all you have to plan what you would like to do, it needs to be explained, then we have design input, uh, we have the, the design development and the design output and this is a very structured process and uh, after design output verify that uh, what has been designed and been constructed is really what we want and there some surprises might happen and then you have to go back to the design input or uh, at least to the design development if some of these functionalities don't work for example. So that means typically in, uh, during device development some or multiple iterations might be necessary. And again, as mentioned before, all this needs to be uh, described and uh, documented in the design history file. Basically what is being done there, it's, it's very similar also uh, to other industry where a really thorough planning has to be done right from the beginning. Um, design plan is describing everything, uh, description. Also we need to know for which markets uh, we are developing because different markets might have different requirements and for that reason uh, it needs to be known upfront for which markets uh, these devices and or combination products are being developed. And then of course a planning has to be done, a team has to be set up which is uh, very cross-functional typically and also the interface uh, needs to be defined and uh, needs to be well thought through for example which authorities we need to interact with also which notified bodies will evaluate the device for example so all these uh, has to be taken into consideration and of course if you develop a combination product a lot of topics have to be taken into consideration it's not only the device also the user for example has to be taken into consideration like age gender some impairments, some indications, uh, for example, like arthritis, uh, we have to consider that the user has more difficulties to handle um, a small device or a given system, for example. Also the truck product, uh, it has to be considered, um, all the properties there like gliding forces, viscosity, um, composition, pH, um, is it compatible with the device, um, is it stable with the device over a time of maybe multiple years. Um, all this has to be taken in consideration and um, also the environment, cool storage or is it being used um, outside in hot and humid weather or in noisy, noisy areas for example where you ca cannot hear anything. Um, all this needs, uh, needs to be taken into consideration um, uh, at which locations, in which environment uh, the device is being used, um, how it's being stored, um, device and truck product, how it's interacting. Um, all these topics have to be considered uh, in developing combination products. And last not least, of course, also secondary packaging is extremely important uh, because it's not good enough if um, the device is functioning perfectly well as it leaves the company but arrives maybe damaged, worst case, uh, at the customer or cannot be used anymore. Also this is an important piece um, in the complete picture. Um, as mentioned in the previous slide, the interaction of the user and the device is essential and for that reason the human factors engineering is a very important part uh, throughout the combination product development process. 
it's very important to understand that the design uh, is based upon the understanding of the users and tasks and also environments. User involvement uh, throughout the design and development is uh, extremely helpful. So that means working with patient groups um, is almost essential in this uh, stay at this stage. And the design is driven and should be driven and refined by user-centered evaluation. And again, as mentioned, the process is iterative. This clearly ensures that we um, are designing a device uh, which can be used easily um, by uh, the typical patient. And um, also, quite analog to the uh, human factors engineering, also risk management is one of the important tasks performed throughout the device development. And uh, during this process, first we need to identify hazards, we have to define the hazards and also estimate risks, um, evaluate the risk accept acceptability um, and also risk control needs to be performed. That means, um, are there any risks which can be uh, removed? Um, is also the residual risk, is it still acceptable maybe? And also in the long run, after the development, it needs to be monitored and updated regulatory. Uh, that means there are requirements on post-market surveillance changes. Um, also complaints need to be evaluated. And also this needs to be considered. This information coming back from the market needs to be considered during the life cycle management. Okay, thanks a lot for listening and goodbye.